Hello, and welcome to another episode of Earnestly Speaking with your host, Ernest Owens, myself. <laughs> so I've just been thinking about like this season, like everyone's shopping and going crazy and you know, all the new trends are out. You know, I can't keep up these trends anymore. I just kind of just go with like the simple stuff. Not simple, but like blue is just never going to go out of style, right? Um, <laughs> But it just makes me think about just the craziness behind shopping and just how much consumption and how much, why do we buy the things we buy? Why are we spending the kind of money we're spending on every single thing and, and name branding? I mean, I'm all about, you know, sometimes you get, you know, I, I was always taught, you know, that you had to have good brands when it came to the stuff that you washed with, you know, certain food you eat, you know, you just can't get everything cheap. But just excessive spending and what does that, well, you know, what is, what does it mean, you know, for someone to have like 30, you know, pairs of shoes and, and have to buy the latest sneakers, but then at the same time, you know, don't know, you know, where, you know, where they're going to, how they're going to pay their rent next month, right? Um, a lot of people I know have these, these, these crazy, you know, hangups on it and what it means for people. So I had a, a crazy story a friend of mine told me was about um, the first of the month and getting welfare. And there was this mother who, you know, when she went there to get services, she would wear her Sunday best, she would say. And I never understood, like, why would someone spend so much money to dress up to go to, you know, a social services room to get, you know, these things. And she said, well, they would discriminate based on how you looked. If you dressed a certain kind of way, they wouldn't necessarily help you as much. If you came in and you looked like you were put together or you looked like you were trying to some way seek employment or, 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 or whatever the case may be, there was some level of bias in how they would treat you and how they would talk to you and things like that. And so for her, you know, spending that extra money to have a certain look and keeping herself up to this high degree was for her what made her feel as though, you know, she mattered. There was this article I read a couple of weeks ago talking about, you know, a lot of black men who have invested in buying new clothes, thinking that that was, that that would, you know, make them not have to deal with the oppressions of being, you know, black men in America. <laughs> sure. Um, but it's, it's out there, you know, people <laughs> think that, you know, their respectability will save them. But there are people that invest in that, this whole idea of being the classic man and having these really crazy nice clothes and dressing up a certain way that that meant something, you know, some level of value and substance that was a shield against oppression and racism and all that great fancy stuff. Um, for me personally, it's, it's become an interesting battle to figure out how do I manage, you know, my privilege and, 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 and you know, the money, like the more you make, the more people expect you to, the more they take, actually, um, taxes. But you get caught up in this field and this mentality of, you know, I have to live up to the Joneses, you know. You get a higher standard, people expect you to look different. Your hair looks a little bit better. You get better haircuts. Um, you get all this extra stuff because, you know, it's supposed to be a symbol of your come up, you know. You, you know, it's, and, it's, and it's ingrained in our culture, you know, especially for, people of color, you know, there's this idea surrounding black wealth and power and prestige, you know, you have to show your worth, you have to show your wealth. When you walk in a room, someone says, you look like money. And I say, what does, what does it mean to look like money? You know, what does it mean to look like money? And in our community, you know, it's, it's, it's gotten the best of many people. Um, you see people, you know, you look at communities in DC, these rich black communities of Prince George's County and Washington DC. The story, the tragedy now almost, is like this community was this great upper middle class black community and family structure. Right? Everybody went to Ivy League schools. And then mismanagement of funds and money, you know, has now made many people have to juggle between foreclosures and getting new properties and things. It's become an epidemic. Um, you look at certain parts of Philadelphia, there's nice little black hubs. I know there's a place called Havertown. There's some great people that live out there of color that got nice property and big real estates and pool parties and fancy stuff. But it's just the, 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 the engagement of it, putting the kids in the Jack and Jill schools and, and, and putting the, you know, having debutante balls. I am not aware of that, just disclaimer, I'm not a Jack and Jill kid, contrary to popular belief. My refinement came from a full ride to Penn. Um, but I grew up in Houston, Texas. You know, I lived in apartments most of my life, apartment complexes. Um, and coming here and seeing this level of black wealth in Philadelphia, being a little bit older, understand the dynamics of it, 
it just made me try to figure out, you know, what do people think about that? This mass, you know, consumption, this conspicuous consumption. Like, what does all this mean? And and what does money mean? And then, you know, in dating wise, I mean, it's it's politics to it all, you know. So I want to know what you know what women think about it. I always ask myself, you know, as a guy, I always the way in which I see possessions and things. I know probably socially, I see them a little bit differently than 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 others. In, in these circumstances. So I was curious to see what a woman thought about this. Hi, how are you? Hi, how What's your are name? You? I'm Sherry Patterson. Nice, hi, thank you, Sherry. How are you doing? Great, good. Well, my perspective is that um, being a black person and um, a lot of black people, they feel as though they need to have some type of self-worth. Mm. And so what, they, what we do is we will go out and we will buy the best gold we will go out and we will buy lots of clothing mm -hmm. to make us feel better about ourselves. Right. Even though we may not have the money to um, pay our rent. Right. Or um, to do some of the more necessary things in life that yeah. we need to do, we will spend the money on ourselves to make ourselves feel good inside. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and for even for myself, I mean. For me, I'm a clothes fanatic, yep, yeah. and one of the reasons I am is because when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of clothes. Yeah. You know, I had just a couple of things in my closet, and when it was time for me to go to a funeral or a wedding, I would have to go and scuffle up, and I might have been late for the yeah. event because I didn't have something to wear, and so I vowed that, you know, I will have those things, you know, to when I was able to afford them. And now I have so much in my closet, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Now I, I just shop sometimes just to be shopping. And what has gotten me to that is that we have so many sales. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Every time you turn around, there is a sale at the store. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I will go shopping for my summer clothes in the winter. Okay. Yep, definitely. And my yeah. winter clothes, I go because I love designer clothes also. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way that I um, have acquired um my large wardrobe that mm -hmm. you know I really don't really need you know? right so I think like self-worth is you know one of the biggest things um, within our society is why we spend a lot on unnecessary things that we really don't need you know instead of doing educational things. right okay. right okay and as you said we have to have the bigger house, you want to move out to Balakimwe, you want to move out to Havertown, mm -hmm. but you know, you can't because, you know, taxes will yeah. um, screen you on out of there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's my view. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> therapy, basically is what I was getting, was shopping, therapy, therapeutic, it's therapeutic to shop. You feel good when you buy some nice things. I, I definitely agree, but I, I do think to some extent there's this, this idea on self-worth. That is the bigger question. And it's, and it's, and it's hard. It's a, it's, a, it's a hard thing to grapple, you know, um, self-worth. So some people put their, their self-worth. They argue, you know, I mean, if you're Meek Mill and you have nothing else to say, you'll just keep talking about the Rolex that you've been half like 3,000 years. And it's like, okay, you got a Rolex. Next. Like, but there's a lot of people that put their value so much on what they have. They they go crazy about it. They fight people about it. They go to war about it. And it's like, we're fighting because a chain's missing a watch. And you know, it's 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 those things. But I think, you know, to the point that was made from one of our guests speaking, was that it comes from a place of not having. When you're looking at the people that are spending a lot of money, you know, for better or for worse, depending on how you feel about it. There's coming from a void. It's, a, it's an overcompensation for a void that, that was there before the money came, right? Before the money came, before the things came, there was these, this, this money, there was this desire to have these possessions because they're symbolic. You know, a Tiffany necklace is symbolic of something. There's a status to it. People will change their mind when they see you. You know, this watch, when this comes out, people just change their mind. They say, hmm, mm -hmm. it just changes. And you see the way people talk to you change. And it's sad how much in reality, as much as I would like to act as though they don't matter, it, it, in many ways they do play different dynamics. You go to job interviews, you know, when I go to job interviews or interviews or um, events, you know, I'll put the Burberry tie on. And I hate putting that tie on, I love it, it's very pretty. But it's that 
it's so flashy. Like the label hoardness of it. Like you don't know this shirt's like probably from Banana Republic. I like the subtlety of nice things, the quality, right? But then sometimes you just, you feel this need and I'm being bad. This is my, many people in the audience are watching, mm -hmm. I mean, you just, this, 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 there's this pressure to flex sometimes because some people really will try to treat you and it's bad that people do it. We're all guilty of this, but it, it's a point, I have to say it. But some people will really treat you a certain kind of way and prejudge you based on circumstances. And it's, and it's bad. And it's crazy because everyone's playing that game and then someone's gonna lose. No one keeps it going. You, most people can't keep it up. Some people keep, some people enter the arena like that. You know, dating wise, I, I'll put like a date. <laughs> you go on a date, somebody will, you know, take you out to, you know, Del Fresco's or um, Fogo de Chow or some really, really big, fancy restaurant, right? And so you looking like, oh, he's looking out to eat. He paid for everything. I can get used to this. Next date, do the same thing. And you know, it's good the first couple of rounds, right? And then, you know, it's like, well, do you just want to go drink drinks? Drinks? Just drinks? <laughs> just drinks? We went from a full course, three course meal to just drinks? Oh, you just want to go out for a dessert? Ice cream? Hmm? So it's, we, we've created, you know, there's circumstances in which people do build up that level of hype around themselves where they can't maintain it. And I think that that's the problematic you know, realm of conspicuous consumption is there has to be some level of control. But I guess in conspicuous consumption, there would not be control because it wouldn't be conspicuous yet, right? So <laughs> there's this, this, this level of possession and power dynamics that play into it. And a lot of times it plays within genders too. You know, um, you know, for me, it's interesting to see gender dynamics play even in relationships that are not necessarily based upon male-female relationships. Like for me, I'm gay, I don't have there's always that wondering of who's gonna pay for it, who's gonna do what. And I just say, we're gonna flip a coin today. <laughs> we're gonna flip a coin. And, and, and I just, you know, I'll just, you know, see who gets it. Okay, it's on heads. You gotta do it a third week. Yay. No, I mean, or you just have a communications thing, right? But then when it's dealing with, you know, more heteronormative relationships and the patriarchy, right? There's always the idea the man pays the bill first. The woman, you know, she just receives the bill and she finds some other creative way of re <laughs> returning on investment. As sex as that may sound, that's the way the culture is. I'm keeping it frank on earnestly speaking. I'm speaking to you earnestly, right? So this is what happens. This is what happens because of this wealth and this money. And you can't take, you know, the date to Chili's. That's not going to happen. Status matters. You know, if someone says taking someone out to eat is a compliment. No, 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 no. It's not taking them out to eat, right? It's not the, it's the where. The where becomes the where and the where becomes the what because you just can't take me to Fogo to Chow and get me a salad. No, I want the filet mignon. So then the where becomes the what and then becomes the how. How are we gonna do this? You gonna split the bill or are you gonna pay by cash? No, you paying by cash, you better have a credit. And if you do have a credit, it better be a black card. See, it extends, right? You're gonna get all your who, what, how, where, and what real quick based on status. It's not a easy, and then it becomes an issue of position and power. So you just can't even be the guy taking me out to fuck with a child with the money, because I wanna know how you got your money. Is your money taxable? You know, can, do your money, yo, is your money taxable? <laughs> do you ask, I mean, you know what I'm implying here, right? You know, like, is your money something that actually gonna taxes? Do you get a 1099 or do you get a W-2? These, these are the questions that we want to know, right? Those are important in status in the way in which we look at how money is being spent. So I've been to restaurants. Um, I went to Ocean Prime. I, I love restaurants, by the way. I'm just not going to hide that. I went to this great restaurant called Ocean Prime and in Philly downtown. And I remember it was a group of people having a dinner party. And they were black, you know, and I'm not making stereotypes because who am I to make stereotypes, right? I go there and make a reservation. They get there. They didn't make a reservation. They had to wait for literally like two hours. I'm just like, okay, well, people don't make a reservation. You, mm. They get to the restaurant, they look, and there's a big conversation going. And I remember it was a group party, and then somebody looks at the bill, true story, and they say, who in the hell ordered gratuity? And I sat there, and I tried to figure out, <laughs> this is real. These are real experiences, real true stories. I sat there across the room and I said, <laughs> really? I said another word after that with a comma, really? <laughs> and, and I sat there and I was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, but that's a real experience. That was someone who really asked who ordered a gratuity. 
And that's when you start knowing the ranges of, of class dynamics and, and, and what it comes with money. Like, are we living within that realm of which we know? Do people understand and value the substance of things, right? Does the, you know, yes, the steak, does, the steak is good there, but the steak probably at Outback probably tastes just as good. We're not talking about quality here. It's not just about quality. I mean, you can make your own steak. I think I'm a great cook. I make better stuffed chicken than most restaurants I go to, and that's not a lie. But it's about the status. To say, you were there at this time, sitting at this table, drinking this and eating that, and paying for it. There's a whole visual feeling that comes around this. People want to say it's about flashiness. People judge women every day and say, you know, well, women are all into shopping. Well, you know, I'm going to keep it real, real 100 real quick. Maybe if you stop judging women just based on what they were wearing and how they looked, maybe they wouldn't have to put so much effort into what they put on. Sexism has put women in positions where they don't have the opportunity to have an equal playing field. So you haven't even looked at women as actual human beings that can work, perform, do the same jobs you do. So they well say they do, play with clothes and makeup, I guess, because that's what you let them do. You know, you just said, okay, the guys are going to do the mechanics and the directing and the editing and the writing and the president and the governing. And then the women are just going to, you know, just be over here. And then you say, well, you know, women are so materialistic. I don't know, because you've never let women do anything else for the past couple of centuries outside of materialism. So then once you've had to pay the bill and you got to that point where you had to fork the check because of sexism and patriarchy in society, then every, all of a sudden sexism is not so glamorous now. Because now you create a commercial mass consumption that has made women feel as though and, and, and that that's how they found their value. Because for me, I do find value in wearing a good suit. But that's a normal thing, right? Like, it's cool to wear a suit. It's cool to wear nice clothes. That's not the point, right? But I never get into a position where I found my entire value on something like that. I mean, in extreme cases, men who put their value and possession in material commercial items tend to have more of a sentimental value to it. There's more depth. It's not, I'm wearing these Jimmy Choo's, so that makes me cute. I'm wearing Michael Kors, that makes me cute. Now, the irony of that, right? Jimmy Choo's, Michael Kors, they're made by men. The men who obsess over those things, it's because it's theirs. There's, there's power in that. Like, how many women designers do women actually wear? Like, when you really think about it, I mean, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all these are by men. So if men you know, that own them are obsessed with them is because it's their own product. The man who makes Louis Vuitton is obsessed with Louis Vuitton because it's his product. The Gucci is obsessed with Gucci because he's the man that's responsible for it, right? So it's theirs that they possess. But even women in possessing and obsessing over material things, they can't even, you know, materialize female items because they were not made by women. So then the irony becomes the self-worth aspect of most things that men self-obsess over is power, their positions, the things they worked hard for, the families they built, the companies they built. You don't know that many women out here in America that can say things like, I value the company I've owned for 30 years. They can't say that. Not many women can say, I value the elected office I've had for 30 years. They can't say that either. I value you know, the family that I've taken care of and I've created and supported for over 30 years. Most women don't even want to take the credit for that. So you have all these different power structures where there's not much for certain communities to rally behind. Meek Mill can't celebrate his degree. He don't have one. You know, the, 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 a lot of the communities, the people that get this mass money, they put their worth on the money because they don't have anything else to celebrate. I've been fortunate to be proud of my pen degree, proud of you know, having a TV show, fortunate and grateful to have a TV show. A lot of people can't say they have a TV show. That's something I can personally take in pride. I'm happy to have a job. A lot of people don't have, well, let me clarify that. I'm happy to have a legal job. I'm happy to have taxable income. That is something that I'm proud to have. I'm proud to have a check that I was able to make and get legally. That's something I'm proud to have and not have to do anything to compromise myself, my morals, my body, or anything in any type of way to get it. That is something proud. 
There's a lot of people in circumstances in Philadelphia that cannot say the same thing. So when you're looking at possession of materials, these materials replace those things. You know, that, you know, Rolex watch that someone has means more to them than what it means to me. To me, it's just a cute little dangly thing that I can just, you know, wear and, you know, it blings in the light, you know, and whatever, right? That's cool. That's fun. If I lose it tomorrow, I'll be a little mad. But I'll wake up and be okay. That person on the other side of the fence who don't have a degree to fall back on, don't know how they're going to make that money again to regenerate the money to pay for another one, that, that lack of privilege, that's going to lose a lot of value because to them that represents their work, their hustle, their stride, and everything else because a lot of them don't have anything else to live for. And the reality is, is that we have to create a society that pulls back from reflecting on this type of materialism. You know, it's, re it's, it's hard because it's all part, to me, the materialism is a part of a larger social stratosphere of oppression and systemic inequality in this country. The, the funny part is, you know who feels the economy like higher than many other groups? Black people. We buy more hair products that are not owned by black people than anybody else in this country, period. We buy more hair products, we buy more movie tickets. And we're not even owning the hair products, and we're clearly Oscar so white, so it's not like we're getting nominated for them either. So yet most of our money go into these industries that don't actually invest back into us. And if you think about it, the prison rate in this country is exponentially black. The unemployment rate is higher for blacks than anyone else. The, the jobless rate, everything else on the negative flip side of most of the narratives tend to be disproportionately black. And yet on the economical side, of buying things and shopping, most of the money tends to go to white-owned businesses. But it's coming from black dollars. And so the reality is it would make sense that those who lack the most are going to put the most money into things that make them feel good because they lack the resources to make good, feel good things for themselves. So communities of colors cannot don't have the access to equity, the funds, the resources, the loans, the investments, the sponsorships, everything that everyone else has. We don't have that to create things for ourselves and make us feel good so that we don't even have to feel as good about those things anymore. If there were more black people and more people of color in this country in general that were employed, that had a good education, that had you know, access to jobs, the resources that they would have would, would supersede their need to feel as though they need to rely on these fancy watches and shoes and all this crap. Because when you're looking at someone like you know, Bill Gates who go to McDonald's and wear a white t-shirt, Warren Buffett who just wears regular clothes every day, and all these rich white men, most of them do not put all this effort and energy and, and, and hype into material things because they don't simply have to prove anything to anyone. We, on the other hand, as, as members of the community and, 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 and working class people, we always feel like we have to prove something to somebody every time. We feel like we have to prove something to someone every time because we don't have anybody else that will believe in us or think of us and take us seriously without it. It's messed up. It's, 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 it's a complete, you know, just it's a complete betrayal of everything that's supposed to be quote unquote the American dream. You know, this idea that you can be yourself, make money, work hard, that's, it's baloney. It's baloney because the way that the system is set up, there's no equity and access. And I have this conversation all the time, and I will re, you know, re-enter this conversation again. People say, I am not a big proponent of equality. Like, equality is great. I'm all about equity. And when people try to ask me, what's the difference between equality and equity, right? So equality is simply everybody, you know, can eat donuts. Everybody can go to the bench and get donuts. That's equality. But then what happens when you give everybody access to go get donuts? Tommy right here is really short. He can't reach up to get that donut. Paul, he's super, super tall, so he can get the donut on the first rack, the second rack, and the third rack. Joe is just right. He can get the donut without any hurdles. Equity equ equalizes the bench. They say, okay, you tall guy, you don't need all these racks. We'll take a rack down, you get one donut. Other guy who's short gets a, a seat pulled up for him so he can be able to reach it. It's leveling 
the playing field is equ equity. And people forget that in these conversations when we're talking about wealth and money and jobs and resources. If people are lacking the proper aid and resources and benefits to help them be able to achieve social climbing and equity, just because you make it easy for everybody to get a job don't mean everybody's going to be able to get a job if the circumstance is not set up the same way. The problem is that we spend too much time trying to make everything equal that we ignore that just because everything is equal doesn't mean everything is fair and just. It's a big step. It's a lot to take in. A lot of people look at it and think that it's just so easy. And it's so easy for white people in privilege to say everything should be equal because they've already had equality. It's never been nothing for them to have to let something go. But for people of color, equality is not enough. There has to be some type of equity and access. Because as long as we have a society where we're spending the most money and, 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 and spending the most money on movie tickets and hair products and shopping and galore, I mean, you, can, you look at these businesses that come that are not black owned in black communities, they thrive, they stay open. They do. How many liquor stores have you seen shut down in West Philadelphia? They don't get shut down, they expand. They relocate and they get bigger and bigger. Do they get shut down? No. How many barbershops get shut down? But you know a couple of little restaurants, mom and pop restaurants, the soul food restaurants, a lot of them downsized though. And it's not because of the fact that they weren't good, it was because of the fact that their access to resources were not the same. So we need to prioritize and reprioritize our values and our self-worth. We're more than the items that we, we wear on our back. We're more than the labels that we slave to spend our last check on. We're more than the Rolexes and the nice fancy fogo to child dinners and the dates and things. We can do those things, but we have to also focus on other things. Thank you.